Despite the fact that the Walt Disney Company has indicated in SEC filings that attendance is going down or will be softening at theme parks, a new report out of TEA says that attendance has gone up. Also, Universal Studios making some big ground over there at Universal Studios Hollywood, probably from Super Nintendo World. And let's not even forget Universal Studios Japan. Let's talk about all of that on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and here with me is the man that I go to for all of my theme park questions, Mr. Vash Kai. Vash, why are the churros better at Disney than over at Universal Studios? Uh, well, if you're talking about Disneyland specifically, it's because it's the home of churros in the Southern California area. No, that's not absolutely the case at all. I believe it's a different vendor that provides them their churros and they're served hot right there. So those two things make the biggest difference in the world. Yep, yep. Well, um, I'm just going to point out that the best churro that I ever had was at Disney, and the opposite was true over there at Universal. Great vacation, really epically bad churro. Uh, mm. Deadline, however, is the first place that I'm going to go before throwing this to Ash, because we always like to talk about media framing here. Disney's still number one in theme park attendance, but Chinese operator coming on strong is by Tom Tapp out of Deadline. Mm. In looking at these figures, I get it that they're focusing on on this uh, Chinese theme park, I believe it's called Chime Long here, but that's really not the one that sticks out to me when uh, looking at all this. They don't even mention Universal Studios, which I think that that and the uh, upcoming Epic Universe is a big deal here. Let's go to this. Uh, the mouse is still mighty, but there's a dragon rising in the east. Again, not talking about Epic Universe. That's the top line takeaway from the latest edition of the 2023 T slash ACOM theme index, an authoritative yearly survey of trends in the theme park industry. The index is compiled by theme entertainment association and infrastructure consulting firm acom it shows disney experience is still firmly atop the list of theme park attendance per operator in 2023 with a chinese company leaping to the number two spot let's see if they show the uh, list here disney experience is up 23 percent with 142 million admissions Fanta Wild Group up 111% with 85 million admission. Merlin with uh, 62, Universal with 60 million, and Chime Long with 36 million. Now, just reading it in that context, I think it leaves out the bigger picture here. I, I think it's funny that uh, Universal has theme parks that are rivaling some of Disney's here, and it might be the fact that there are so many fewer Universal theme parks than Disney theme parks here, but uh, Vash... I'm going to go to you, and when I call you a theme park expert at the start of this, that's not me being ironic or funny. You really do know your stuff. So please, don't let me down here. Show me what's really going on. I will absolutely show you what's really going on. We have to look at the report itself, Jonas. I don't like looking at other people's interpretations of the report. Give me the report. Give me the PDF. And we have it right here. This is from the Themed Entertainment Association right here. We have been waiting for these figures for a long, long time. They're a little bit late coming out this year. And the suspicion was, was that uh, maybe Disney uh, might have not been performing as well as its universal counterparts. And in one part of the world, that is absolutely the case. But in others, well, not so much. So here we go. Top 25 amusement theme parks worldwide right here from the Themed Entertainment Association. By the way, an increase overall of 23% year over year uh, for the themed entertainment community. So that's that's uh, very, very good right there. At number one, we have Magic Kingdom Theme Park with a uh, seven. 17.7 million guests that year right there a 3.4 percent increase as noted on this chart disneyland coming in number two with 17.25 that is absolutely massive i think that's the closest number one spot uh that i've ever seen disneyland actually be that is pretty pretty cool right there uh universal studios japan osaka right here with a 30 percent increase year over year no obviously Japan was a little bit late coming out of the uh, the pandemic era right there. We have noted on this channel multiple times that Tokyo Disney Sea and Tokyo Disneyland not doing the best despite investments, major investments into their properties right here. And it's the first time that I've ever seen Universal Studios Japan actually overcome Tokyo in any way. Remember Tokyo Disneyland for a lot, a lot of years was the number one attended theme park on these charts and that goes back years and years and years i was comparing these numbers to the 2019 numbers because 
I just think there's too much volatility in, in, in the in the numbers between now and uh, 2019. So when comparing the 2019 numbers, it looks like Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea actually took it about almost a 20% decline from those numbers when comparing them to 2023. I believe it's about 18.5% and 18% respectively. That is huge. However, Universal Studios Osaka that saw a 10% increase from 2019 levels right there. Very noteworthy indeed. Yeah, that Chime Long Ocean Kingdom Park definitely making some ground right here. A 184% increase year over year from that park. Obviously, there are uh, issues in China that may have <laughs> impacted that number to quite a great extent. But the fact that it is number two to Shanghai in that same region right there, that's very, very interesting uh, indeed for sure. Uh, also, Universal Studios Hollywood making a huge huge increase in attendance 15 percent as you can see right there definitely has universal's mario or nintendo land affecting that number right there that is absolutely huge and you can tell that uh universal wants to invest in that brand yeah uh to yeah. a very very big extent right there now vash there are a couple of uh pieces of data that i want to add into this uh right here please if you if, if you talk about Magic Kingdom Park, Magic Kingdom has a proposed capacity of 100,000 guests uh, at a, a single time. Maybe you can push back on me, but that's just that's just Googling and looking at uh, Len Testa's capacity measurements here that's, from touring plans. That's pretty that's pretty aggressive. I think at like max build out at like, you know, when 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 everybody's working, everybody's staffed up and all the floodgates are open, it quite possibly could get to 100,000 people per day. It probably averages, though, anywhere between 60 to 80, I would say. Now, Universal Studios Japan on a similar idea has a capacity of 48,000 on a mm -hmm. given day here. Now, uh, looking at the difference there, I would say that Universal Studios Japan right now is pretty packed. I would say so as well. And uh, we know that they're going to be making a range of investments to get uh, even more bodies in there. Right. So in, in when we look at Universal Studios Hollywood being even where it is on that list, uh, the proposed capacity of that park, 21,000. So even yeah. smaller when it comes down to it. Uh, it this mm -hmm. is just a, a fascinating. If we go dollar for dollar, number for number, uh, like, 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 for instance, an Avengers film having a spectacle at maybe $600 million in the making of that film versus a $100 million film making a big right. spectacle. You know, if we're talking about the cost and the capacity that it takes to run one of these parks, I'm not trying to defend Universal here other than pointing out that the size of the park actually does make a difference here. Islands of Adventure, obviously a teeny tiny park that could probably fit inside Magic Kingdom and not have any overflow here compared to Magic Kingdom. And of course, I mean, if we're going by acreage, like Animal Kingdom, uh, you could fit Magic Kingdom just inside of the Kilimanjaro Safari area over there at Animal Kingdom. But the park itself, obviously, much smaller when you talk about the walkable capacity areas of that park. It is fascinating to me to look at the Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom figures. And I, I think the capacity over there at Disneyland is probably a lot lower than, than people are thinking here. So Disneyland Park being as filled as it is, that would be, it's about 15% smaller as far as capacity compared to Magic Kingdom over there at Walt Disney World and yet rivaling those figures. So I think the rivalry of those figures stems to the annual pass holder population of Disneyland. There's just, it's just a much more consistent base of attendance than the huge swings that we might uh, see at Magic Kingdom. I think that's why Disneyland is so close there. It doesn't have quite the capacity that Magic Kingdom does, obviously. But uh, because of its attraction count and because of people coming back, you know, day after day in order to experience that park, um, I believe, what, 75 percent of the annual attendance for Disneyland comes within 250 miles of that resort. At least that was the old number that I've heard before. I think that's why. Now, when you look at the per caps, I think that's a much different story. And you know, a lot of people they make note of the attendance. But a guest at Disneyland is not nearly as profitable as a guest at Walt Disney World. And we know why that is. Uh, a lot of that has to do with hotels, DVCs and so forth. There's a disparity there for sure, which, you know, the Walt Disney Company is committed to 
building out. We'll see what happens with Disney and Ford and everything. But a couple of things I want to note here. A lot of people were saying, oh, look, there's a there's a 10 percent decline in attendance year over year from Universal Studios Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios Florida there at the Florida parks that Universal owns and operates. But, uh, you know, from the Comcast earnings call, they did note that a lot of their per cap decline and the drop in that quarter not only came from international cruises and international tourism and so forth, which, by the way, <laughs> uh, cruise line from Universal, pretty sure that's going to be coming here soon if they're saying that, that they're losing out from competition from cruises. Anyway, they acknowledge that making fewer investments in new Florida attractions ahead of the opening of their new park epic universe played a role in declining attendance. I think that's very accurate. And here's the thing. I think what we're seeing from the 2023 TEA numbers, I think, is a reflection of that. I think there has been a lack of investment on the two existing parks as Universal is throwing all their eggs in the epic basket. Uh, I think that's a, a, a pretty sound strategy, but it does show you that you have to continually invest in your properties or else you do experience, in some cases, double digit declines when it comes to attendance. Here's the thing, Jonas. Universal experiencing this loss in attendance now well, we know that that's all going to be upended with Epic Universe opening in 2025. That will be, I think, the operational reality of the Walt Disney Company in the ensuing years between these announced offerings, right? Between monsters, cars, villains, all of that. And when they actually open, we know that there's going to be several years that they will incur in terms of a lack of new offerings while Epic Universe will be absorbing the crowds that maybe Disney would have had had they continued to invest in their parks. Yeah, this is the this is the real thing here. Uh, I, I think that w when it comes down to it, obviously Universal Studios is moving in the right direction. It's a it's not a one to one comparison here. They got started later and all that stuff. I'm not trying to make it a Disney versus Universal video here, but the opening <laughs> of Epic Universe is going to have such a profound impact in this area, and Universal is in a much better cash flow position than the Disney company, so they can do it again. They have a lot of unused IP, untapped IP that they can get their hands on, especially when you consider that Warner Brothers right now, I mean, I don't even know if Warner Brothers is going to get bought up by Comcast here in the next little while because Warner Brothers is doing so poorly in the stock price. I, and they I, remain bullish too, Jonas. Here's the thing. They remain bullish on their theme parks business. While the parks results are below our original expectations for the year, we still view parks as a terrific long-term growth business for us. It's not quite the guidance that you hear from Hugh Johnston and so forth. I mean, they almost refer to them as legacy businesses, which I suppose that they are, but there is definitely long-term potential there. And we just haven't seen the Walt Disney Company very committed to the end. When it comes down to it, I look at the Disney Company and what they're trying to do to expand. And it sounds like overseas they will expand and that will be good for their capacity issues. I don't know how it's going to do for their bottom line because hand over fist, they make so much money in Orlando and the rest of the parks, they pale in even Disneyland pales in comparison to what they make in Orlando, Florida and outside of the United States. I mean, it's 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 teeny tiny. It's piddly. Uh, by the way, the five billion that they're probably going to have to pay in order to get the rest of Hulu, that's about as much as it costs to build the entirety of Shanghai Disneyland over there. That was 5.5, if I'm being generous here. And not counting uh, additional bribes to whoever uh, had to, sorry, uh, additional incentives for those who might have greenlit the project here. Um, that being said, we want to throw this to our commenters here. What do you think about these figures and the fact that the Walt Disney Company has signaled that their figures, their attendance numbers are going to be softening according to their SEC filings? Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What's it going to take to uh, keep these numbers up, keep them going in the right direction? Like this video, of course, if you like this video or you found it helpful or you want to help out the channel, that's good too. And uh, if you really want to help out, well, consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.